All right, guys, don't mind my oil jug, but this video, we are going to cover the replacement of high pressure fuel pump, 5.3. Now the 6.2 liter and the 5.3 liter, nearly identical procedure to do the high pressure fuel pump. So essentially you're gonna remove your intake induction boot here or assembly or whatever we wanna call it. You got a clamp over there you got two little push locks on each of these breather tubes, and then you got your main clamp here. Next, I'm gonna move everything aside. We're gonna pull the intake manifold off. Now, I do not believe you need to remove the throttle body to do it. I'm gonna show you guys the procedure on it. And then after we have the intake manifold off, we're going to replace the high pressure fuel pump, which is on the back side down in the valley gets driven off of the camshaft we're going to replace that we're going to do a full tutorial in this video if you haven't done it already pull your pcv connector off of the port on the manifold right there you're going to pull the harness all these little gray clips pull those all off you're going to go over to the other side do the same procedure we're going to unhook the heater hoses that go to the heater core and we're going to pull them that way with a bungee get them out of the way disconnect the rest of the harness so we have room and then this can come up again we're going step by step throttle body disconnected alternator connector disconnected purge valve solenoid disconnected now you're gonna have to pull all these off as well or at least i do easiest way to do that is get down in here with your trim tool and just apply a little pressure up release that tab and then they are just squeezed to release tabs like everything else i'm gonna pull these off okay so this harness well we got one more clip right there get in here and for some reason i can never get these when i'm filming it's kind of funny okay it didn't even break it so we're going to take this and the heater hoses sorry we're going to move this over here okay now there's more stuff you're gonna have to disconnect, but essentially you guys get the point. You're gonna do the same on this side, move everything out of the way. The manifold will come straight up and then it will come forward. Then you got bolts, just like every other manifold. Uh, very, very simple to pull it. We're gonna get to that in a second. Oh, one more, forgot. Okay. When things don't go your way, you just do it the easy way. Okay. These are the fun ones back here, guys. Absolute blast. So stoked. This side's not too bad. All right, I got the manifold loose, so at this point, I can at least lift up and start to sneak it forward. There we go. All right, now that you guys can see, See where that harness stretches around to the back? There's clips there that you gotta pop off and they are a bear to get to. Which is specifically why 
I pull the manifold up and forward and then you have a little bit better chance of getting your hand in there. Um, you do want to use it in trim tools, come around the back side of the corner of the top of it and release them off. Once you get that back side of the harness off, this whole plenum just pulls right off. So a total of three, three mounting tabs on the back side of this manifold. Not fun. So, take this. Now, you're gonna take this off. You're gonna do it slowly so you don't knock all the dust and debris into the uh, intake ports. Well, not a perfect job, but. Okay, so for those of you that may or may not know the location of the high pressure fuel pump, it is right there, back side of the block. So, important things, okay? The pressure line comes out here, goes into a T, and then gets divided between the two fuel rails. The pressure line you have to unscrew here and unscrew over there to get them off. Now, here's the thing, guys, okay? What you need to do, what my recommendation is, to bleed off the high side fuel pressure, okay, what I typically do is I actually bleed it right at the high pressure. And what I do is I just loosen it slightly. It's going to leak fuel down onto this valley here. You put some rags. I actually use pig mat. You move it very, very slowly, okay? It's not just gonna spin one thread and pop off and spray fuel all over the place. It threads on quite a ways. So what I do is slowly just move it back and forth, release all the fuel pressure out of it. And then once I'm confident there's not a whole lot of pressure there, then I loosen this side, pull the piece off. Now, the other thing you could do you could disconnect the high pressure fuel pump, pull the fuel injection fuse and turn it over a couple times and that'll basically it'll fire the injectors without firing the high pressure side, causing a lack of pressure in the high pressure side. Um, but this is essentially the gist of it. You got your intake ports, you got your valley, high pressure fuel pump. So everything's gotta come off there then you got three flange bolts. I believe there's one on the back side behind that plate. Um, but the other thing is make sure you put a new gasket between the high pressure fuel pump where that plate is and the block absolutely has to have a new gasket. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start bleeding this off and uh, pull the high pressure fuel pump out. Highly recommend taping off the intake ports. Okay, they don't have to be completely stuck. Just layers of tape, excuse me, layers of tape over it so that nothing can fall in there. No, you're not gonna do the backside one. And the reason I say that is because we still have to pull the feed line off. Be counterproductive to tape over it. Not gonna work very well. So what I do, take the pig mat, stick it in there. I'm gonna grab your 17 mil. And now you gotta be careful, okay? I recommend wearing safety glasses but I'm gonna slowly turn this. You're gonna start to see fuel. Okay. 
I don't know if you guys can see that. Guys, there's a lot of pressure in there, so do not assume once you hear it for a minute that it's good, because it's not. There's a lot, a lot of pressure. And a lot of that fuel is gonna bypass the pigment, probably run down the back of the block. We're not super concerned about that. Still going, you hear it? Okay. That's blood for the most part. Still a possibility of getting fuel on your face. Wear safety glasses, wear your personal protection. Okay, got that side loose. Come on. Get it out of the way. Our feed line, we're going to pop the back of it off. See, now we got back fed pressure coming out, which is perfectly normal, and that's why I specifically said even when you assume, you got to make sure you're wearing safety glasses. I, I really should lead by example, but I'm not the best at that. Okay, our pigment did a fairly good job. We're just gonna stuff that down right here. Cause these are gonna continue to bleed. Okay. That's now. I'm sure you guys have done these before. You're gonna need your quick disconnect tool. Um, those two bolts come out. Now you wanna loosen them very, very, very slowly because there's a lot of tension on that high pressure fuel pump and it wants the spring wants to eject it out. So when you do it, loosen one side a little, loosen the other side a little, other side, etc. Here is our high pressure fuel pump. There is our pressure side. Here's our inlet side. Essentially, you guys can see that little detent. That all has to be aligned the correct way when you go to put the new high pressure fuel pump in. Um, the other relevant factor is that you have to have cylinder one on TDC when you go to put this back in because it has to be compressed down and it has to be on the right spot of the cam. All right guys, when you order a new high pressure fuel pump from GM, it's gonna come with a bracket around it and the pump is already attached to the bracket. So make sure you pull the entire thing. The other thing is you have to put this in a position where the lobe of the cam is on its flat spot, meaning the lowest point. Now how you do that is put a breaker bar on the front crankshaft pulley, turn the engine over with one hand, and push on the piece on the inside. There's a little shaft that sticks up. Push on that with your finger and you'll feel it drop. And then when it drops, you know that you're in a down position and you can go ahead and install the high pressure fuel pump. The other thing is you do absolutely have to replace this feed line per GM. They want you to replace that, so keep that in mind.